Hello everybody and welcome back to Synapse. I am Ritika and in this video we shall talk about heart sounds. We'll discuss about heart sounds in brief and so that in subsequent videos we can learn about murmurs. We'll first talk about the first and the second heart sound and the ejection click and opening snap first and then we'll discuss about the third and the fourth heart sound. The first heart sound is produced due to closure of tricuspid valve and the mitral valve at the onset of ventricular systole, as shown in this really simple diagram. The ejection click is produced due to opening of the pulmonary and the aortic valves a little after the onset of ventricular systole. That would mean that the time between the first heart sound and the ejection click corresponds to isovolumetric contraction of the ventricles. The second heart sound is produced due to closure of the pulmonary valve and the aortic valve at the onset of ventricular diastole, as shown in the diagram. The opening snap is produced due to opening of the tricuspid valve and the mitral valve a little after the onset of ventricular diastole. That would mean that the period between the second heart sound and the opening snap accounts to isovolumetric relaxation of the ventricles. Let's talk a little more about the first heart sound. It can be written as M1 T1, that is, the mitral valve closes slightly before the tricuspid valve because we know that on the left side of the heart the pressures are higher, so the valves happen to close a little earlier, or on the right side, that is, with respect to tricuspid valve, the pressures is lesser because of which the valves can remain open for a little longer. The conditions in which loud S1 is heard are physiologically it is heard in pregnancy and children because of hyperdynamic circulation. In case of tachycardia also there is a louder S1. In case of mitral stenosis and tricuspid stenosis there is a loud S1. Well the logic for this is that let's take the example of uh, mitral stenosis. So the pressure in the left atria will be higher, way higher than normal. So the mitral valve will open with great force and it snaps back or it closes also with great force. And thus the S1 is louder than normal. Soft S1 are heard in the following conditions. In bradycardia, in calcified mitral stenosis and calcified tricuspid stenosis. If it is non-calcified mitral stenosis and tricuspid stenosis, then the S1 is louder. But if it is calcified, then the elastic recoil of the valves will be lesser because the calcification interferes with the valve function and thus there is a soft S1 in these conditions. In mitral regurgitation and tricuspid regurgitation, because the valves are not closing properly, there is a soft S1. Talking about the second heart sound, it can again be divided into two components, A2, P2, because the aortic valve closes a little earlier than the pulmonic valve. It is called as A2, P2. The gap between this is generally 30 milliseconds, but again, this gap is variable. It changes with respiration. During inspiration, the venous return to the right heart increases and thus there is greater amount of blood in the right ventricle. Now that there is more blood in the right ventricle, it takes right ventricle a little longer time to push this blood into the pulmonary artery and thus the pulmonic valves close a little later. So there is a delayed P2, so there is a wider split of the second heart sound during inspiration. While during expiration, the venous return to the right heart is slightly lesser. As there is lesser blood in the right ventricle, it needs lesser time to push this into the pulmonary artery. And thus, the pulmon pulmonic valves closes a little earlier when compared to that during inspiration. So there is a narrower split of the second heart sound during expiration when compared to that during inspiration. This is physiological and it is normal. Let me know if you want another video on the pathological conditions where the second heart sound is either widely split, narrow split or fixed. That's pathological conditions. I shall definitely make a video on that. Let me know in the comment section. Let's wind up this discussion by discussing about the S3 and S4. 
S3 is heard during the rapid ventricular filling phase, that is passive ventricular filling phase. So it is an early diastolic sound. It is seen in congestive heart failure, dilated cardiomyopathy and call per manil. Let's locate this on this diagram that we have drawn. So somewhere here, early diastolic sound. S4 is heard in conditions where there is atrial hypertrophy. In case of pulmonic stenosis and pulmonary artery hypertension, a right-sided S4 is heard, while aortic stenosis or that is valvular or subvalvular aortic stenosis and systemic hypertension, you will see a left-sided S4. Let's draw this in this diagram. So this is just pre-systolic or in late diastole. This is where you see the S4 or here the S4. This ends our discussion on basic heart sounds, a very brief idea about heart sounds. Then further videos will be on pathological conditions where the murmurs are heard. I hope this video was useful. Like the video, share the video and subscribe if you haven't yet. Goodbye.